Good morning. This is the Citrus County Planning and Development Commission public hearing for September 7th, 2023. If you would like to join us at this time, I invite you to please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Lord, please give us the grace to be understanding, patient, and tolerant. With these attributes, we can conduct our work in a manner which will be pleasing to thee, our county, and its residents. In the Lord's name, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For the courtesy of the applicants, the board, and uh, those around you, please silence your devices at this time. May we have the roll call, please? The following. Planning and Development Commission members are present. Could you speak into the mic? Chair Stacy Worthington, First Vice Chair Richard Barms, Second Vice Chair James Royce, Robert Bass, David Bramblett, Michael Facemeyer, Kurt Stone, and school board member Chuck Dixon. Thank you very much. If any person decides to appeal any decision made by the commission with respect to any matter considered at this hearing, he or she will need a record of the proceedings. And for such purpose, he or she may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceedings is made, which record includes testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. During the public input portions of the meeting, individuals are given three minutes and members of an organization are given five minutes. When anyone wishing to speak comes to the podium, please complete a yellow form and hand it to the recording secretary. Please print your name, address, and the number for, of the application for which you are speaking on the form. The yellow forms can be found at the podium by the door. If representing an organization, a letter of authorization must accompany the speaker or be on file. Comments will be limited to the topic being heard. Please state your name and give your address for the taped record. Um, I just want to say we all had a crazy week last week with Hurricane Idalia, and I hope that all of the members of the audience did not suffer too much damage and members of the board and staff as well, and glad to see you all here today. At this time, we will open to the public. This is an opportunity to come forward and address issues um, other than the topics and applications we'll be hearing at a later time. Anyone wish to come up? Okay, seeing none. We had no minutes. Staff announcements? No announcements. All right, thanks, Joe. Ex parte communications, Madam Attorney. Hi, good morning. Uh, with regard to the applications you'll be hearing this morning, have you had any ex parte communications you need to disclose for the record? And we'll start with Mr. Dixon. None. Site visits. None. 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 Site visits. None. Thank you. Okay, if the applicant is present for CU-2023-00007, please come forward and may we have the introduction. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Madam Chair, I do not see the applicant for this application, uh, Dr. Wilburn. Oh, okay. So that's true. He may be running a little late. All righty. Um, well, then we will proceed with PUD-2023-00006. Thank you. If the applicant is present, please come forward. PUD-2023-00006. Paul Furman for Ben Smith. This is an amendment to an existing PUD to allow for RV and or boat parking facilities and or other vehicle parking facilities. This is an aerial view of the subject property. This is a view of the subject property. This is looking across West Gulf to Lake Highway down North Merlin Terrace. This is looking west on West Gulf to Lake Highway. This is looking east on West Gulf to Lake Highway. This is the most recent site plan submitted by the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Paul Furman, representing Ben Smith and Develop International, the owner of this property. 
Uh, I was hoping that uh, this would come up a little bit later because Mr. Smith is not here yet, and he has a couple of important things to say about a billboard, but maybe he'll be here. Um, <clears throat> I have this application is for the modification of a previously approved PUD master plan for a storage facility. The previous facility was for 25,200 square feet of indoor climate controlled storage. The proposed facility is for 20,000 square feet of open storage plus a 30 foot tall billboard. The intended name of the new storage facility is Storage Fix. I have prepared a series of slides. Uh, do you have a pointer I can use? This is a PDF, so if you'd like me to change the pages, I can do that. Show me how to use the pointer. There you go. I got that. Okay, I see it. It's a little bit of a, a delay for the There's a delay for the pointer. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. This is a, a little bit wider angle aerial photograph. This is located between on, on the south side of 44 between Lakanto and Crystal River. Uh, to the east, you can see the with Lacucci Electric Operations Center. And just to the east of that is the old uh, Stokes Flea Market, which is now also a storage facility. Next slide. There's a little bit closer up uh, slide. To the right or to the east is Little People's or Little Disciples uh, Daycare Center. And to the west is Kidder Orthopedic. They make uh, prosthetics. Next slide. This is a, a wider angle view aerial or a photograph from across the street. The wooded area directly uh, in the middle is the subject property. <coughs> the daycare center is to the left and the uh, Kidder Orthopedic is to the right. Next slide. This is a, uh, in your packet, this is the plan that shows the existing condition. One of the unusual things about this property is that it's got a significant amount of slope uh, and it's kind of narrow. Um, the uh, contour lines are shown as those squiggly dash lines <clears throat> going from left to right. And there's about 29 feet of vertical uh, from uh, the back to the front on this property. Next slide. This is the proposed site plan, <clears throat> which is also in your packet. Next slide. This is the uh, county's uh, GIS topographic map with five foot contour lines. So again, you can see how it uh, has quite a bit of slope. And you can also see uh, that this property and the adjacent ones all slope considerably toward the north. Next slide. This is the master plan approved by the PDC in December of 2018. Uh, please note the location of the cross access and the uh, drainage retention area, which are which is in the front. This was the logical layout for the retention area and the cross access, as I will explain. Next slide. This is the uh, previous site plan that was submitted in 2019 for permitting. As you can see, the cross access is moved to the front and the uh, drainage retention area is south of it. This is because the members of the Board of County Commissioners at the time decided that it should be along, that the, uh, front, the cross access should be along the frontage instead of south of the retention area. 
This was a change from the plan that had been approved by the PDC. Next slide. This is the previous uh, grading plan that was submitted for permitting in 2019. Next slide. This is an enlargement of the retention area on the north part of the uh, previous plan. This design has a retaining wall uh, around about 75% of the uh, retention area. And in addition, there are two places where four foot diameter exfiltration pipes <coughs> were uh, shown under the pavement. It was largely due to the cost of all of these items that the previous owner bailed and sold the property. So in order to avoid a repeat of this outcome for Mr. Smith, I will attempt to explain the rationale for the proposed layout in stormwater management design. Next slide. This is a concept grading plan <clears throat> for the proposed project. I've also shown layout and grading concepts for the future redevelopment of the adjacent property to the east. This is the existing Little Disciples Daycare Center. Most of the existing development on the daycare center predated the requirements for providing stormwater management. Keep in mind that properties in this area slope to the north. It is logical that the retention areas for the proposed storage fix project and for the future redevelopment of the corner property should be at or near the lowest point. In this case, the lowest point is near the no northeast corner of the storage fixed property. In fact, there is a DOT inlet behind the sidewalk there that collects the existing runoff. Another consideration for the location of the cross access drive on the storage fix site is the county's requirement for separation between driveways and road intersections. North Conant Point is a local street. That's the street to the east. The separation from State Road 44 for our driveway on Conant should be at least 125 feet. The existing driveway on Conant is about 165 feet from the intersection. It is logical that the location of this driveway will not change when this corner parcel is redeveloped. Internally, the layout for traffic circulation for the corner parcel would benefit from a cross access connection that number one, would also be south of any new retention area. And number two, would provide more direct access to the driveway on Conant. So this concept shows a retention area on the north side of the little people's the little little disciples daycare center with cross access continuing from storage fix out to conant uh, basically through their existing parking lot i hope that you will agree that having the cross access at the front of the storage fix property would severely limit the redevelopment of the corner parcel both in terms of drainage and future cross access connection. Next slide. On narrow properties such as this one, it's only 85 feet wide, it can be a challenge to design cross access to match the existing grade on either side. But when you also Locate the cross access at an elevation lower than the grade where the retention area needs to be. There will be a need for more excavation to create storage volume. And when soil conditions are less than ideal as on this site, the retention area will need to be larger and there could be a need for retaining walls or exfiltration pipes. We are trying to avoid these things. These cross-section drawings are a comparison of the retention areas designed for the previous project and the proposed project. By having the cross-access drive to the south, 
here. And uphill from the retention area. The retention area can be about two and a half feet shallower and have the normal slopes around the perimeter. This will be less uh, construction costs for the developer and the retention area will work better. Okay, so moving on to uh, landscape buffers. Uh, there is some discussion of landscape buffers in the staff report, but I see that the final recommendations only call for the addition of a five foot type A landscape buffer on the west side, that's fine. The previous requirement for a type D buffer plus a wall along the south side has been removed. I agree that this is not warranted, especially since the property to the south is at the crest of a hill and most of the storage area will not be visible due to the significant drop in elevation to the north. With regard to the billboard, it is intended that the billboard will be the typical wood construction with six poles and no higher than 30 feet. I understand that there is some precedent for the approval of a similar billboard at another storage facility in the county and the property owner Ben Smith uh, hopefully is here or will be here and can speak to this. Thank you for your attention and I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from staff? No, ma'am. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Commissioner Bass. Uh, Mr. Furman, you made a comment that says the soils are less than ideal. Looking at the staff's report, it says that um, its primary Chandler series uh, and the soil limitations building the site development are slight. Why do you say that soils are less than ideal when it indicates that uh, Site development would be slight. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay. On the page two of the staff's report, it says that the soil type in the area is primary Chandler series and soil limitations to building site development are slight. And you stated that the soils are less than ideal. Why are you saying that the soils are less than ideal when they're saying that any adverse impacts are slight? Well, the uh, soil survey maps are you know, not entirely accurate, you know, for specific sites. When we did the uh, improvement plans for the previous project, uh, which was called high and dry storage, right. we got as far as uh, uh, getting a site-specific geotechnical uh, uh, report for the soils there. And it turned out that they were in fact, you know, uh, some clay there and a, uh, and a seasonal high water table issue. Okay, thank you. Also, um, the current plan that you have, does that include the five foot wide buffer on the west side? Do you have enough room to put that five foot buffer? Yes, there's room for it. We just haven't uh, labeled it as such. Okay, and then last, on your concept plan, you showed um, the grading for a detention basin on the adjacent property. You're not looking for approval on that at this time, correct? No, that's a concept. Okay, thank you. Thank you, any other questions from the board? Okay, I don't see any more, thank you. May we have the staff presentation, please? Good morning, Jen Perkins, planner. Good morning. This, <clears throat> this application is a request to amend an existing PUD to allow for RV and or boat and or other parking facilities. It also requests to place a billboard on what would be a uh, developed parcel. This is an aerial view of the subject property that totals approximately two acres. The subject parcel is zoned general commercial and properties to the east are zoned um, professional services and office district and medium density residential district with MDR to the south as well. And the um, parcel to the west is GNC. This is looking across West Gulf to Lake Highway. There's a residence there. There's an office and a pet salon. To the west is an orthopedic office and a um, pet exterminator business. 
Uh, to the east is apparently a daycare. I thought it was a preschool, so that's why it's labeled that, but to the east is a daycare. And this is the most recently submitted site plan by the applicant. So CPA AA PUD 1809 amended the LDC Atlas map and the future land use map from MDR and PSO to GNC and established a PUD. That PUD allowed for two mini warehouses that totaled 32,700 square feet with an office. And I will say that I got that number from the staff report. It seemed that that differed from uh, what Mr. Furman said. The uh, most recently submitted site plan depicts two open air uh, storage areas uh, totaling 20,000 square feet. And the office there is optional. Again, the proposed billboard would be on uh, a developed parcel and the LDC states that billboard shall only be placed on vacant parcels. The buffers to the north and east exceed LDC standards. The 15 foot type D that is along a portion of the east property line uh, does not specify whether there is a wall and a five foot type A buffer would be required to the west. The project is not compatible with the residential uses and the daycare use. The CPA AA PUD 1809 that approved those two mini warehouses, the uh, use square footage uh, kicked it over into large non-residential design standards and that included the larger buffers. So a 15 foot type D with a wall along the south property line, as was conditioned with the previous PUD, may reduce incompatibility with the residential uses. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the applicant, Mr. Furman? Do you have any questions for staff? Well, once again, I was hoping that the potential be here to address the billboard issue. Is he here? Well, things happened this morning. Um, any questions from the board? I have one. Mm -hmm. Is this parcel located in the 44 IMA? No. Okay. All right. That's it for me. Anybody else? Madam Attorney? If you, when, when you're done, uh, if you wanted to continue this until later in the meeting, that okay. would certainly be up to the board. Okay. Okay, the public portion of the meeting will now be opened. If there is anyone present in favor of the application who would like to speak, please come forward to the podium. As a reminder, individuals have three minutes to speak and organization have five minutes. When speaking on the application, please address the board. If you have documents you want entered into the record, please provide a copy to the recording secretary. Is there anyone in favor of this application? Please come to the podium. Going once, twice. Seeing none. Okay. Anyone opposed? Please come forward. Please come forward. Sir, you can fill that out um, afterward and hand it to the recording secretary. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my name's Andy Carlton. Uh, sitting next to me, Stuart Bozeman. Well, he's over there now. Uh, we're partners in the properties where Little Disciples Preschool is. And we went through this process once before uh, for the storage unit. The only objection we have is the cross access. And I heard Mr. Furman refer to it. Uh, just don't know exactly where he has that placed on the site plan. We, we don't, it's sort of like your time to uh, give us your opinion. We'll, We'll address your comments afterwards. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's our only objection. I'm speaking for Stuart. He'll be coming up speaking for himself. We don't have objection to the growth or the use of that property as long as it's in county ordinance. However, we don't want to cross access dissecting our property. Uh, there's a playground. There's a parking area behind. County commissioners referred him to move it to the front. And there's a retention pond in there, as he made reference to. And there's not enough room there uh, to, 
for the setback from the buildings where the children are actually housed throughout the day. But that's my only question is where that would be placed. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Next speaker. Uh, he and I are. Uh, Jared, owning. could you have, give us your address? I don't know if oh, the, the, the address of the, the property is 5612 West Gulf okay. of Lake Highway, which is like uh, the gentleman had shown is just to the east of, of the storage building. And it is uh, called Little Disciples Preschool, just for clarification. Uh, my wife and his wife have, have operated that business well over 20 years. We would definitely object if the cross access is going to be uh, looking to take a portion of our property um, as well as retention. We have more than adequate re retention on our property that was designed and approved when that building was uh, converted from residential to commercial prior to our acquiring that property. We acquired it already as is and then turned it into uh, what's now the preschool. So um, again, I'm not clear on his plans. I don't know if their plan is to to try to um, have a part of our property become part of their cross access, which I understand is in new construction today, it, it's a good idea. But now you're talking about um, uh, doing a, a significant um, uh, taking away property from an existing building that was built prior to that. So um, we're not opposed to the project, but we are definitely opposed to anything that would impact our property. Thank you very much. Yes, are there any other speakers on this application? Anyone? Okay. Seeing none, would the applicant like to respond? If we could bring up my... Uh, Slide number 12. I did talk about this in my presentation, but I guess it uh, uh, didn't, uh, wasn't clear enough. The previous one, please. Okay, so this is, and I'll use the pointer on the slide behind, uh, the screen behind you if you don't mind. Again, there's two reasons for the location of the cross access. The cross access on our plan is shown behind the retention area on the south side of the retention area. There's two reasons for that. One is the uh, location of the driveway on Conant, which needs to be uh, 125 feet from the intersection, and the fact that the uh, property right along 44 is the lowest uh, topography and the natural or the logical place for uh, stormwater management systems. Now, in, in answer to uh, the gentleman's concerns, for our project, the cross access construction will stop at the property line and there will not be any traffic there until such time as the corner park property is redeveloped and uh, they'll also be required to provide cross access. So that there could be actually be a, a, a fence at the east property line. The pavement will stop at the property line. There'll be no traffic there until some future date. Very good. Thank you. Okay, at this time, uh, we will close the public portion and bring the discussion back to the board. Um, if anyone is interested in continuing this to allow for the applicant to arrive, does anybody want to entertain that motion? Okay, doesn't look like it. All right, anyone want to go first? No one? <laughs> I'm just sort of, <clears throat> I'm just kind of curious. The um, I remember this application previously, and we discussed the location of the cross access and the, the topography of this particular site. 
And then it's just kind of puzzling to me that, and I didn't know until we, obviously we heard it at this meeting that the board of County commissioners decided that they thought they should, that they should move the cross access to the front of the property, which is in fact the lowest portion of the property, which creates undue, uh, you know, hardships for anyone that's going to try and develop the property for the, for the uh, drainage area. So I, I just, I don't know. I think it's, I agree with Mr. Furman on, on the cross access. I, I know these properties and I know this particular area. It's, it's very, it's sloped. It's a high slope. You can see it. I think it's roughly 40 feet from the, from the rear, which would be the South to the North. So, um, I agree with the cross access location. Uh, one of the things I would say, and I know that Mr. Smith was uh, intending on speaking on, is I am not in agreement with a billboard on this property. Thank you. Commissioner Bramlett, just to piggyback on what you're saying, I, I'm looking at the cross access. I, I'm not in favor of this project because I don't find it compatible with the area, and I'm also not in favor with the billboard. Um, but at the same time, when I look at this cross access, it's going behind the daycare or the preschool building. So if then they're going to have to connect behind their building. I, I don't know if that makes sense for the future. Yes, ma'am. That wouldn't have to happen until the property is converted to another use. Yeah. But it sort of forces that property to develop in that way because they have that cross access at that point, which would affect the development if it were ever redeveloped of that property instead of being in front, which is standard and typical. That's always a consideration when these things come up. Okay. All right. Those were just my thoughts on cross access, but I'm not in favor of it anyway. Anybody else? Yeah, Commissioner sure. Stone? Yeah, it seems to me that the cross access will... Yes. Sir, please. Thank you. My new location is confusing. I, I, I know, I know. I'm trying to help you out. Um, it seems like the, the, the putting the uh, cross access where it is now proposed uh, just sort of kicks the can down the road, and as you said, it makes it... Uh, any future uh, property owner or the existing property owner uh, to have to deal with uh, something not of their uh, of their creation. Uh, nor do I uh, uh, believe the uh, uh, we should permit a uh, a uh, billboard there. The staff has recommended against it on several uh, portions of their analysis. So uh, I agree. I, I would not support this uh, this application. Madam Chair. Commissioner Bass. I'd like to make a recommendation for denial. Uh, the Planning Development Commission finds application number PUD 2023-00006 inconsistent <coughs> with the Citrus County Comprehensive Plan and Citrus County Land Development Code, and this board recommends denial of the application to the Board of County Commissioners based upon the evidence and testimony presented in the staff report and conclusions regarding this petition. Second. Thank you. We have a first by Commissioner Bass, a second by Commissioner Facemeyer. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries 7-0. Okay. Uh, if the applicant is present for PUD-2023-00007, please come forward. Clark. Uh, May Madam, I have the introduction, please? Thank you. Madam Chair, if I can, um, I received a uh, contact from Mr. Wilburn. Oh. And he had asked that this board would continue his application. I don't know why he's not here, but he asked me to make that request. So you want to deal with that before I get going? I think it's a rescheduling, not a continuance. Yeah. Okay. Um, do we have to make a motion to reschedule it, or is it just... No, I think it yeah. can just come... Staff can just schedule it for... If, if it's a request to reschedule, staff regularly, uh, situations come up where staff has to reschedule things. Okay, very good. Well, we'll do that then. Thank yeah, you, Thank Clark. you. I didn't, all right, for the record, my name's Clark. Oh, Clark, Still, do you want the introduction? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Eager thank today, you. aren't we? My turn. Hud 2023 Clark Stowell for Sterling Residential LLC and Sterling Commercial LLC. 
This request is to modify and expand a PUD on 139 acres to allow for medical office uses and multifamily uses. Aerial view of the subject property. View of the subject property from State Road 44 looking across the commercial portion. Looking east on State Road 44. Looking west on State Road 44. Looking across State Road 44. The master plan with the Veterans Clinic expansion submitted by the applicant. And the master plan without the VA clinic submitted by the applicant. Thank you. So if you could go back, ma'am, to the one site plan before. All right. <clears throat> Good morning, um, Parkster, on behalf of the applicant, Sterling Residential LLC. This is a previous uh, a modification to a previous PUD. The PUD was 139 acres. It was a residential project. It was approved by this board and the Board of County Commissioners. The G flume is GNC and MDR. The LDC Atlas map is a PUD. The subject request is of the 139 acres, 6.1 acres are in play, and that's the cross thatch area up there on the site plan. The existing use is residential property. The proposed use is for multifamily medical office uh, and a VA clinic. Now, <clears throat> the VA clinic or, you know, or a combination of any of those three. Uh, the VA clinic process is as follows. Citrus County is going to get a VA clinic. It is a bid process. For the bids to be approved, the subject property has to have land use approval. So this is submitted. This site has been identified as a potential location. And uh, if approved, then it would go and be submitted to the VA along with about six to eight other sites, all of which are approximate to the intersection of 44 and 491. The VA basically has said this is a central ridge area and that corridor is the general location and the people get the bid. Now, <clears throat> like any government bid, it's the lowest and the most responsible. Now. You can figure out the inconsistency there between those two tombs, two two terms. But frankly, um, the property is vacant. The change uh, will then put any notices uh, notice to any buyers of the remaining portion of the uh, existing PUD. On they'll be on notice that there'll be a VA clinic there or medical offices. The 6.1 acres will be combined with about five acres of existing GNC to the north. You can see the access points are off of State Road 44 and off of Laurel Street, which is an existing street and proposed to be developed on the existing master site plan PUD. If they don't get the VA approval for this site, then it's gonna be what it is now. But to get the VA, to even get into the process, they need the VA as an authorized land use. Mr. Gibbs uh, provided us some conceptuals. I provided them to the staff. And I hope you've had the opportunity to review them. I did not bring a PowerPoint. So um, you can see it's a one-story building with parking and there's room for additional uh, medical offices. Generally speaking, you have GNC to the north and you have GNC to the east. Uh, a good location, centrally located. It will be, if you want to handicap this, if you're in that business, it's, it looks like about a 50-50 chance here. So uh, if you approve it, doesn't mean you're going to get a VA clinic here, but it does provide an opportunity for the VA clinic to be here. The staff conditions are fine. The engineering comments about traffic our traditional uh, comments and acceptable. So if you have any questions on me, I'll be glad to answer them. Are there any questions from staff? No, ma'am. Total? 
approximately 10.5, 6.1 for this site and about four and a half acres north of it. Any other questions from the board? Looks like none. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we have the staff presentation. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Joe Hockadell, Principal Planner with Land Development. <clears throat> uh, this application is being requested to modify and expand an existing plan unit development on this subject property. Um, as Mr. Stowell explained, the purpose for this is to allow for a possible VA clinic to come into this site. So here you can see this is the little expansion area that he was referring to if the VA clinic comes in and they need that extra space up to where Laurel Street is proposed to be constructed, then that would be the expansion area. And the area being modified is this portion in the northeast corner of the site. Everything else on the, on the previously approved PUD is going to remain the same. So all the residential uh, to the west of this is just like it was previously. And so this application just basically gives them some flexibility in what they can do in that northeast corner there. So here you can see the existing land use. As he said, there's a portion of it that's already general commercial. And so again, this is the portion being changed. This was the previously approved master plan. So they're taking that area where the townhomes were approved and some 40 foot wide lots were approved for single family. And they're requesting to modify that a little bit, depending on what's going to go there. So as Mr. Stowell explained, they could have the VA clinic come into this area. But if not, then they want to have the ability to have some medical office, multifamily, townhome, and even some single family if they want that. This would increase the total units of the development by 11. It goes from 608 to 619. And as I stated, there's really no other changes to the previous master plan. So here you can see some conceptuals that were provided for the possible VA clinic. Again, if they don't get it, it could be medical office, it could be multifamily or something, or some mix thereof. So here's one of the conceptuals. This shows the area being modified. And to kind of zoom in on them, here you can see the previously approved master plan on the right side, the conceptual with the VA clinic in the middle, and the conceptual with the other uses possibility on the left. So this application is compatible with the surrounding area. The findings are positive. We do have some modified conditions from the previous PUD. We modified them to this one and we have received no public input for this. Thank you, Joe. Clark, do you have any questions for staff? No, any questions from the board? Hey, Joe. Good morning. Commissioner Barnes. On the, uh, is there any affordable housing approved in this section that's already been approved for on this this, this PUD specifically uh, they have not specified if anything is going to be affordable or not they just say multifamily townhome so, so we family. approved this today and they don't get the VA what happens next uh, then they could still use this with medical office they could use it for um, single family multifamily so it gives them a little flexibility as to what they can do in that northeast corner if they don't get the VA clinic. So, but it can still be utilized for um, medical office or residential in some form or fashion. Thank you. Joe, but there's not a specified number. Like before when the previous application was approved, it was 125 townhomes. We had a, a specified number, but here it's very, there's so much ambiguity. I mean, I understand the VA clinic and, and then everything involved with that, that, that we need a location here in Citrus County. But if it doesn't happen, then we're looking at <coughs> multifamily apartments, no specified number. But they would have to, you know, apply like the and land development code would apply. And so they could only do right. so much. Yes. So they don't specify exactly because they want to have some of that flexibility kind of depending on how it's going to go. So. If they don't get the VA clinic and they want to do multifamily, they're still beholden to our density standards. Um, you know, they would still have to meet land development code requirements and all that. So. Okay. Any other questions, Commissioner uh, Stone? Joe, if the uh, if the VA clinic doesn't uh, doesn't go, 
uh, and they have the option to either do townhomes uh, or uh, some other medical uh, type facility. Uh, is there anything else that they could uh, put there besides just townhomes and medical? Is there something like a tire recycling plant or something? No. So the way the request was submitted, it's for a VA clinic or medical offices, or if they would rather go to the residential side, it would allow for multifamily apartments, townhomes, or single family consistent with the rest of the PUD. Okay. So the, the choices are just a medical facility or residential period. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? Okay. Looks like no more. Thank you. This time we will open the public portion of the meeting. If anyone is present who would like to speak on the application, please come forward to the podium. As a reminder, individuals are given three minutes and members of an organization are given five minutes. When speaking on this application, please address the board. If you have any documents you would like to be entered into the record, please provide a copy to the recording secretary. Would anyone like to speak on this application? Please come to the podium. I just said anyone. Good morning. My name's Paul Darty. I live at 3481 West King B Street in Lacanto. I kind of like what they're doing here, but I've got a couple of questions that I think should be presented to the board. Assuming best case for the applicant here that it's approved, that the VA desires to put their clinic here, will this have any impact? on the proposed construction entrance off of West Laurel to the rest of this particular PUD and the 70 acre PUD that was passed about two years ago. In other words, if the VA goes in first before a lot of these houses are built, is this gonna cause a problem with that construction entrance? I think that needs to be considered because if I were the VA, I sure wouldn't want all those dump trucks and block trucks and cement mixers rolling past my place to build the 900 plus proposed units in both of those PUDs. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else like to speak on this application? Please come to the podium. Anyone? Going once, twice, three times, seeing none. Now we will, uh, well, Clark, do you have a response or a rebuttal? I have a comment. Okay. I thought I was done with this project, but I got this emergency phone call in April from August, and this application was prepared uh, on the fly, so that's why I'm back. But I want to point out the medical office is in combination with the VA clinic. We don't want medical office as a freestanding use on this piece of property. If that clarifies that, and Jack, you can modify your conditions as um, necessary to make the document speak the truth, as us lawyers like to say. And there's multiple entrances to this particular site, as you're aware from the original master plan. There's an entrance to the south, there's the Laurel Street entrance, there's uh, entrances to the west, and but we don't intend to use those as construction entrances. And there is the main entrance off State Road 44, which is a... Uh, minor collector road, 80 feet in width. So I would suggest to you that construction, Laurel Street would not be the sole entrance for construction traffic. Beyond that, I'm done, thank you. All right, thank you. At this time, we'll close the public portion of the meeting and bring the discussion back to the board. Anyone like to start? Madam Chair. Commissioner Bass. I think this is a great opportunity for the county to have a brand new VA uh, center and I will be in support of this application. Uh, just following up with what Clark stated regarding the VA and medical offices, um, will we be changing condition number one? Joe, we're changing condition number one to reflect that it, the medical offices will, would be in conjunction with the VA clinic. Somehow, I don't know. We can. The way it's written, it gives them the flexibility. It says it shall allow for up to 619 residential units, single-family townhome and, and or apartment, as well as a VA clinic and or medical offices. So 
I think the way it's written, it gives them that flexibility so that if they don't want to do that, they don't have to. So, but if we can change it, if you want. Well, Madam Attorney, you look like you're ready to say something. Well, you could just change it to VA clinic with medical offices okay. and yes. associated uses. Okay. okay, sounds good. Great. Thank, Thank you, you very much. You. Commissioner Barnes. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor with it. I, I only have one concern. I mean, I've attended many, many uh, veterans hearings and VA hearings, and one of the most important things that I've heard from the VA side is affordable housing, and that's why I brought that question up. Uh, they're almost, from, from what I've heard, they will not approve something that don't have affordable housing within a certain mileage rate. I'm all for it. I'm worth... Uh, I'll take the chance and, and hope that we don't have to see Clark back in here on this to, to change anything. But I just wanted to, you know, voice that because that's one of my biggest concerns is if you don't have affordable housing, you don't have a feather in your hat. And I think to get this VA hospital here, we need to have feathers in our hat. And we don't have them. But I'm in, in favor for this. Thank you, Commissioner Barnes. Anyone else? Okay, um, for the purpose of a motion, the Planning and Development Commission finds application number PUD-2023-00007 consistent with the Citrus County Comprehensive Plan and Citrus County Land Development Code and that this board recommends approval with conditions of the application to the Board of County Commissioners based upon the evidence and testimony presented and the staff report and conclusions regarding this petition. We have a motion by myself, Commissioner second. Worthington, a second by Commissioner Bass. Any further discussion? That, All, that in, yes, ma'am. That included the changes to the written conditions. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion carries 7-0. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if the applicant is present for AA slash PUD-2023-00006, please come to the podium. <clears throat> what? Okay. So that was the one that was the one we already did. Six. Was it six? Okay, five. Sorry. <laughs> Typed it wrong. Two zero two three zero 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 five Walden Wood South. This is an Atlas Amendment and a FUD amendment to Walden Wood South. I know, that's where I got it all. Yeah. This is an aerial view of Walden Wood South. This is looking west on West Maryvale Lane. This is looking east on West Maryvale Lane. This is looking north and south on South Suncoast Boulevard. This is the Walden Woods South Platte. And these are the site plans submitted by the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Bill Starkey, representing Walden Woods South. Um, what we are asking today is to take two tracks, one of which to add that cul-de-sac, add some additional housing. This is a 55-plus manufactured housing community. Uh, and then the other track is to uh, add a maintenance shed for to keep and maintain the beautification of the community. All the... Uh, the product will remain consistent with what is already in the community. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions from staff? No. Any questions from the board? Mr. Bass. Uh, it indicates in staff report that you need to connect water to South, South Suncoast Boulevard and Ponce de Leon Boulevard. Is there water currently in the development or is this going to be all new water to the entire development? So the community has a, a shared system with the other manufactured housing community to the north of it. Uh, this was originally the third phase of uh, a larger one. So we have a shared water. For us to add capacity, we would need to connect that pipe to the community. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, I'm not seeing any. Thank you. Okay, we have the staff presentation and the, no, just the staff presentation. Madam Chair, I would just like to clarify, this is PUD 2023-0006. Yes. 
Okay. The previous one was 07, and it was a typo on the... Um, the other one that was... The typo on mine. The, oh, okay. Yeah, on the, on the slide it says five. It's supposed to be okay. six. Very good. Thank you. Yeah, I get this from you guys. I don't make these up. <laughs> so this application is a request to amend the LDC Atlas map from rural residential district to rural residential district with mobile homes allowed on two tracks in Walden Woods South. They also seek to amend the existing PUD uh, to add an additional 14 single family units or single family lots and to add an accessory structure to house maintenance equipment. PDO 0502 uh, was approved for 248 single family lots. AA PUD 1403 decreased that number to 236. This application is requesting 250. This is an aerial view of all of Walden Woods South. Tracks 17 and 19 are depicted. Track 17 is the site of the proposed accessory structure, and track 19 is the site of the proposed additional 14 lots. This is just to give you a visual of the length uh, of track 19. It is approximately 2.76 acres. And this is the site of the proposed maintenance building. It is 0.11 acres in size. This is the current vegetation that exists on track 19. Uh, track 17 and 19 are designated as open space. However, even if you remove these tracks from the open space calculations, they are still meeting their minimum required 20%. And here's some example of some other open space they have around their wetlands. This is the plat from 2016. Um, tracks 17 and 19 are again labeled. And these are the site plans submitted by the applicant. As far as concurrency, we already went over that a little bit, but as far as sewer, the applicant has stated that there is sufficient capacity. However, a letter has not been provided. Uh, Citrus County Water Resources District provided a letter stating that they have sufficient capacity for central water for this project. But again, that uh, connection is at the intersection of South Suncoast Boulevard and Ponce de Leon Boulevard which is a little less than a mile away. As far as compatibility, the applicant has stated that the lots will be similar in size and construction to the rest of the community. Thank you. Um, do you have any questions for staff, Mr. Starkey? Thank you. Any questions from the board? I have one. Um, is, what buffering is required on um, Suncoast Highway on that track 19? on the frontage. Is there any buffering required? I'm trying to think. I didn't Joe? see any indication. Is that the one that's on, um, it's on 19. the it residential is. lots? Residential lots on Highway 19? Right. Yeah, there's no uh, buffer requirement for a residential lot on uh, a roadway. OK. All right, thank you. Anybody else? No? Thank you very much. This time we will open the uh, public portion of the meeting. If there's anyone present who would like to speak on this application, please come forward to the podium. As a reminder, individuals have three minutes to speak and organizations have five minutes. When speaking on this application, please address the board. If you have any documents you want to be entered into the record, please provide a copy to the recording secretary. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, I'm Polly Worf. I'm the senior community manager at the community to the north which is Walden Woods. We currently provide the water and sewer to Walden Woods South. We just need clarification on where the water is gonna come from for these additional um, plots because we don't feel at this time it can come from us. Uh, that's not saying it can't be reconsidered, but we just need clarification. And I'm sorry, it, it wasn't clear to us sitting in the meeting today. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else who would like to speak on the application, please come forward. Anyone? Okay, seeing none, would you like to respond? The, the water lines, from my understanding, are on the south side of 98 on both the uh, southeast and southwest corners. We'd be looking at uh, the southeast corner, taking that down and connecting uh, 
to make sure that there'd be capacity. Obviously, this is for future use, but that would that would be the uh, linchpin of this actually happening for us. Um, so I think I hope I clarified that with you, Paula. Yeah, the, Sir, if you could just yeah, address the board. Um, the water line, we would we would connect in either in partnership with you or or down through the master meter that we share. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay. At this time, I will close the public portion of the meeting and bring the discussion back to the board. Anyone have any comments? Okay. Seeing none. Anyone have a motion? Ma'am, I'd like to make a motion. The Planning and Development Commission finds application number AAPUD 2023 0006. Five. 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 No, Six. No. Six. Six. Oh, yep. oh. I don't know. <laughs> Please don't confuse me, Stacy. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Consistent with the Citrus County Comprehensive Plan and Citrus County Land Development Code. And that the board recommends approval of the application to the Board of County Commissioners based upon the evidence and testimony presented in the staff report and conclusions regarding this petition. A second. We have a first by Commissioner Bass, a second by Commissioner Barnes. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion carries 7 0. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there any further discussion of the board or? Staff comments? I was just going to give you some idea of what's coming up. <clears throat> so it looks like the September 21st PDC hearing, we've got two applications. There is uh, one for another church and uh, one the other one for the possible VA clinic site. And then... The first one in October, we've got three applications, one variance, and then um, an ordinance amendment and the County Road 486 IMA workshop. So those are coming up. All right. Very good. Any other discussion? Okay. Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>